Welcome back to the garage. Uh, today we are going to do engine teardown on this 2009 Raptor 350. Um, in the previous video, we troubleshot it and we found out that it's low compression. Uh, we got the spark working again. We fixed the wiring. The wiring was all messed up. As you guys can see here, I had to um, rig this up so that it would actually work. Um, one of the wires is already falling off. <laughs> anyway, um, sorry for another day. So the harness is a little bit messed up, but we can work with it. We'll be okay. I don't think we need to replace it. Um, so let's get into tearing this thing down. I think the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to pull the inspections cover here. Um, and uh, let's just double check that, we, that we're at top dead center um, and that the timing is uh, spot on. So let me do that first before we start tearing into this. All right, guys, we got the side cover off. And I just want to come down here and show you, see if you can see it, that it is on top dead center there. And if you look here, this mark right here, I know it's hard to see with the light, but there's a mark right there. And it should be in line with this right here. And it looks like it's about a tooth off. So the timing is about a tooth off. Now, let me see if I can do this with two hands. Now, if, uh, try to hold that like that. You look at this here, this timing chain has a ton of slop in it. Look at this. I mean, that's not good. That should not have that much slop. Uh, so I think at this point now, before I go any further, let's pull the chain tensioner off and see if that's okay. If it's not, We'll have to replace it. If it is, time to change bad. I think the time to change bad. Anyways, let me pull the tensioner and I'll come back. All right, guys, I pulled the tensioner out and it looks like it's just about all the way out. Let's pull it and see. It is all the way out. It will not come out any further. So that tells me that the time and chain is no good. So we need to replace the timing chain. This seems okay. When I pull that and push it in, it seems to be okay. This is good. Timing chain, unfortunately, is not. Uh, all right, um, but, 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 let's start pulling the top end and then we'll have to pull that side cover. All right, why did the motor just fall? <laughs> it shouldn't have fell like that. So that means that these lower motor mounts down here are loose. Take a look at this. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Look at that. That motor's not even tight in the motor mounts. Oh boy. All right, let me work on that first. I want to tighten it, make sure everything's aligned up here before I go any further. All right, the lower motor mounts tight now. <laughs> Never seems to end. All right, I'm gonna take these two top, these, uh, let me actually show you guys what I'm doing here. I'm gonna take these two mounts off right now. I already took the bolt out in here and you guys saw when I did that, the motor dropped. So we fixed that, the motor's tight now. Um, I'm gonna pull these four bolts out. Hey right, guys, so what I usually do is, uh, I usually put everything back the way it was. Uh, and that way, Just makes it a lot easier for me when it comes to assembly that I put everything the way it was when I took it off and I put the four bolts back in the upper frame here and I guess we know why this cracked because the motor was loose and I was putting stress on these because they're not very thick. All right, let's move on. You don't want to come out. It's time to get the big gun. Never lets me down. <laughs> that is for sure. All right, that's not a factory washer. That's galvanized, so. Somebody's been in here before, guys. Let me get a light, see if that keyway's in there. 
Yeah, the keyway's still in there. Or the key pin. You know, this timing chain looks like it's been replaced, but it looks like an awful cheap chain. Almost like it's... There's no way that's a factory chain. Absolutely no way. All right, let me pull the gear. And I'm just gonna let the chain fall because I really don't care because we're gonna replace it. And the gear looks good. <coughs> Throw that in the box. This chain is absolutely cheap. And I'm just gonna let it fall because we're not gonna use it. We're gonna replace it anyway. All right. It looks like somebody used a healthy amount of uh, RTV on this, as usual. <laughs> oh, I can't stand people using RTV. All right. Um, let me get some tools set up, and we'll crack all this stuff free. All right. I'm gonna, I like to crack them with a pipe. Put the Allen wrench in the pipe. Um, there's a reason why, because sometimes these are really stuck. Oof. Ow. There it goes. All right, we got that one cracked. This one don't want to move. I don't think this has ever been a pot, to be honest with you. I'll try going that way and then this way. Oh, wow. All right, we got them cracked, and you guys can see <laughs> that was not easy. And it'd be pretty hard to do if you didn't use a pipe for leverage. Um, you're going to whack on this with a hammer or whatever, and you're going to strip these out, and then you're going to be in a world of hurt. All right, let me get a wrench for the top here. That looks like a 14. And this is a ratcheting breaker bar, which is pretty nice. Now it's loose. It's good for tight spots. All right, all the screws are out. Let's get these, let's get these Allen heads out of here. All right, guys, all the bolts are out. Try popping this guy off, shall we? And what just fell? Brass washer for the, uh, or copper washer for the exhaust fell out. Throw that in the box. We'll reuse that. That looks like a really good thick one. All right, let's try to pop this thing off of here. Screws out of the motor. Well, this guy's never gonna, never gonna come out. I don't think. And it's coming through here. <laughs> Boy, it's uh, don't make it easy. <laughs> Problem is, is, these bolts go all the way down through the head. Uh, I'm sorry, the cylinder. And if you don't get them out, you can't get this thing off. All right. Seems like they're coming through here pretty easily. It's not going to be easy to get back on, that's for sure. I just don't want to have to pull the motor in order to this top end, and hopefully we won't. All right, so we got one more problem, and it's a chain tensioner thing here. And it's out now, but I don't know if I can get it to come out of there. actually get this thing out of here we'll uh we'll pull everything over to the um bench and look at it over there all right let's get that head out of there she looks pretty carbonated up all right i'm gonna go throw this on the bench 
All right, guys, I'm going to rotate the motor down because I want the piston at the bottom so I can get this cylinder off. It feels awful crunchy. All right, that's at the bottom right there. Now we got to get this 8 mil off of here. This bolt here holds the cylinder on. You get these wires in the way. You get them out of the way here. All right. That wasn't on there too bad. All right, bolts out. Let's get the cylinder off, shall we? Let's see what this guy looks like. All right. A lot of stuff falling here. And if I'm honest, <laughs> this thing does not have a full, does not even have a full base gasket. Ugh, unbelievable. Let's crank this up to get the piston off. Oh boy. Oh no. Oh boy. Yeah, the piston's pretty toast. She's pretty toast and it looks like somebody just recently did a top end on this and the fact that it's already smoked. It's not a good sign. All right, I'm gonna pull pull the wrist pin and uh, the piston and um, come back when we inspect the crank. What the hell's going on here? She's hung up on something over here. Now let me try taking it out the other side. Yep, it's going. It should come out a lot easier than that though. I'm gonna say there's something wrong here. Ah, <sighs> boy. Yeah, that looks like a new piston for sure. And it is a cheap Chinese knockoff, and it is burnt to a crisp. All right, guys, I'm going to tell you what I did wrong. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys, hopefully none of you ever do it. I should have put paper towels in here, because when I took the clip off, the piston, the wrist pin, it fell down inside of here. Doesn't matter. I'm taking the side cover off and replacing the timing chain anyway, so I'll fish it out at that point. But you want to always cover your holes whenever you're taking, even cover this. And let's do some investigation here. If you guys look down inside there, you see that RTV? It looks like somebody's had this case split before. And this crank right here is not OEM. It's black, and it shouldn't be black. It should be a bronze color. It's not black from being burnt up because the crank itself isn't burnt. But this crank hasn't been in there that long. God, I don't know who did this rebuild, but they did a terrible job. All right, um, I think before we go to the bench, I think we need to remove the side cover. Well, let's do that. I wanna get the timing chain off and I wanna spin this crank around and I wanna see exactly what I'm working with here. All right, let's get to it. That wasn't very tight. This should slide right out, which it does. Now, this cover should come off, and that's a 10. I don't know why there's a 10 in there. There should never be a 10 in there. Wow, oh, it is a 3 8 This ain't good. Holy shit, that's a 3 8 That ain't good. Oh, man. This ain't good. Oh boy, somebody put a standard screw in there. It's probably gonna go back in. Unfortunately, I ain't playing that game. All right, let's buzz the rest of these off. All right, we got washer on that one. 
we got a washer on this guy right here. This one. Just keep that in mind. This is the stator, so there's a magnet on it, so it's going to be a little tough to get off. There we go. This has a relatively new gasket on it as well. Alright, let's get the wheel puller. Alright guys, got the wheel puller. I am going to put the screw back inside of here, because I don't want to damage the end of the shaft. We're gonna use the big guy, and this thing is just incredible. There we go. All right, let's pull this off, and we got the. Uh, I got a gear floating around in there. All right, this doesn't look that bad. Let's go and bring it over to the table. And this is the shaft that goes in there, so I'm gonna put the shaft back in there so I don't lose nothing. And bring it over to the bench. There's the chain. Let's go inspect that. This chain being as loose as it was, just wanna make sure that everything is good. And we'll bring this over to the bench. All right, guys, I told you I dropped that clip down in here. And so I'm going to stick the magnet in here and see if I can fish it out. And I don't, I'm not having any luck. Oh, there it is. Look at that. That went all the way down to the bottom of the crankcase. <laughs> Good thing I got that out of there, that's for sure. All right, like I said, don't make my mistake. All right, guys, let's assess what we're at right now on this piece of uh, junk, so to speak. All right, so as you can see here that somebody put a crank in this and that's a new, I wanna say it's a new gasket anyway. Um, this gasket surface here wasn't cleaned up very well. You can still see chunks of gasket on there. I'm surprised it wasn't leaking. We also, right there, where, let me point to it, right there, where the timing guy, timing chain guy goes in, is broken. There's a piece of it missing. Um, I think it'll still hold the guide in there fine, but that tells me that at one point this bike threw a chain, a timing chain. Um, so that's something to look out for. Look at, look at here. Look at the old gaskets. Let me see if I can move that out of the way and you can see it. <laughs> look at the old gaskets hanging down inside the motor. <laughs> I didn't even bother scraping them out. <laughs> look at. <laughs> and this base gasket wasn't even, they didn't even replace it. Look at it. Look at the O-ring there. Unbelievable. This is, I don't know if you guys can see that. See if I can hold that there so you can see it down there. That is a Wysco crank. So somebody replaced the crank. So that's good. It's got a brand new crank in it. Uh, we do have this issue here with the shaft, with the taper all galled up. So maybe somebody forgot to put the keyway in there and they tried to run it and they galled it all up. I don't know. We'll have to check out the um, <sighs> magneto side of it or the flywheel side of it, I should say. And then looking in here, we got mismatched hardware right there. And if you look over here, the pulse generator down inside of there is showing bare, bare wire. So that needs to be addressed. I know the pulse generator works because it did have spark, but I'm going to fix that. Uh, I don't think electrical tape is going to do it, so I might just wrap that with um, JB, a thin coat of JB Weld. That should, uh, that should protect it, keep it from arcing out. Um, you know, I'll just wrap some JB Weld around it. I mean, I don't know what else to do here. I mean, I know the I know 
that this works, so I'm not going to replace it. Uh, I'll have to polish up this shaft somehow and get the galling off of that. I'm not too worried about that. And it's got a new crank. All benefits, all positives. I guess at this point, we need to go over to the bench and take a look at what we got and what we're going to need to get. All right, guys, we'll start with this. Let's inspect this. This looks good. This is the starter gear. And I don't see any issues with that. That is a good part, and we will reuse it. The gears all look good. Everything looks good. We'll just clean that up, and we'll reuse it. No issues there. All right, next is going to be timing chain. Let's look at the timing chain here. This might be the cheapest looking timing chain I've ever seen. It doesn't, I don't know if this is Japanese, Chinese, Mexican. I don't know what the hell this thing is. But it just, it looks like it's, it doesn't have a lot of hours on it. But it's just not, it's just not a quality chain. So this is getting replaced for sure. Now, let's look at the flywheel. So the flywheel, and there should be a one-way clutch on this, and I don't know, I don't know what's going on here. Why is this one way in? <laughs> this should be a one-way clutch, and it should move freely, and it doesn't. I mean, this bike is the gift it keeps giving, I guess, huh? <laughs> This really, literally is a one-way clutch that seems to have welded itself on here. Oh, oh man. Yeah, this thing's no good. You can see there, that is all chewed up. That is never gonna spin free. That needs to be replaced. And the one-way baron is all flat spotted out. So the one-way baron is gonna have to be replaced. And it looks to me like someone already tried to get this out of here and they were unsuccessful. Actually, you know what? Let's do that another time. Um, let's look at the rest of the stuff. Let's just do an evaluation here because I know I need to order that. I'll try to take it apart off camera see what happens all right the head let's look at the head uh it's pretty carbonated up we need to take the valves out new seals lap the seats uh clean it all up see what we got going on here we need to take we need to take the camshaft out and determine if all that stuff is good we need to pull these Inspect the rockers again. I'm gonna do a I'll do a separate video on this head repair We won't get into that right now, but the head itself Looks good. We shouldn't have an issue with reusing this once we um, once we rebuild it, clean it up. So that's good Hopefully the cam is all right. If not, I'll order a new one. Hopefully the barons are good and so on This cam chain guide is completely worn out. You can see the grooves in it. That should be flat. I Think it should be flat but it's pretty grooved. I'm going to replace it. This one here is extremely grooved. So we are going to have to replace this one as well. So these need to get replaced. Put them in a pile of pots. Here's the head gasket. I don't see any blow-by. But I don't understand why. Why they're all, it's all being, why these are elongated. They shouldn't be elongated. Man, I don't know what the heck somebody did to this thing. But this, these should not be elongated. That's elongated too, which tells me that this thing was not in there properly. Oh, all right. The piston obviously needs to be replaced. I mean, this thing is in not in good shape. And it's an, a cheap Chinese piston. And this is probably why this thing blew up again. And what we're gonna do is we will check the ring end gap in a second. Cylinder.
I mean, there is some, I can catch a lot on my fingernail here down on the bottom. I don't think the cylinder is usable. I mean, the, the actual bore itself has gouges in it too. I mean, I could throw a hone in it, see what happens. I may have to, but the bottom down here, it looks like it's beyond repair. It is really gouged, and, I, I, and I'm just afraid that if I put a new piston in here, it's just going to gouge that up as well. So um, I think we're going to have to look into getting a new cylinder, unfortunately. All right, let's, um, let's just <laughs> take a look at this ring end gap real quick, shall we? I got a feeling that I'm not even going to have to get feeler gauges out. <laughs> let's see how bad this is. Oh my god. Now typically on a four stroke, you're looking at around 18 to 20 thousandths ring gap, ring end gap. You guys see that? Look at the size of that ring gap. <laughs> That's uh, 90 thousandths maybe. So, well, that's no good. Let's check the other one. And the bottom ring is usually a little bit bigger <laughs> on ring end gap. <laughs> but they're never that big. Wow, huge. All right, so we know that the ring end gap wasn't right on these. So, was that the reason why compression was low? I don't know. It does fit pretty good in here. But I'm going to say the ring end gap was toast. The cylinder's toast. I need a cylinder, piston, and rings. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll go with the niche setup. The niche cylinders are pretty good, but the pistons are garbage. So maybe I'll just go out. Maybe I'll get a Pro X piston and a niche cylinder, and that should, should fix our problem. All right, guys. I think I'll go over a little bit of... Uh... What I'm, what I'm going to order for parts. So I need a lot of stuff for this, but at this point, I only want to buy motor parts because I want to make sure I get this thing running right before I start fixing brakes and cables and suspension and all that. I need to make sure this motor is good because I don't want to have to um, throw needless money at this, I guess is what I'm saying. So uh, first thing I'm going to order here is I'm going to order these. I'm going to order a uh, spot plug and filter, and that's like $16. Um... The next thing I'm going to order is I'm going to order a Tusk Complete Gasket Kit Top and Bottom End, and that is $32. Bucks. And then I'm going to order the starter clutch gear, idler bearing. It comes with the bolts. It comes with everything. Um, I'm just going to order this all up brand new. I'm going to try to save that flywheel because used flywheels right now on eBay are going for like $200 a piece. And I think I can clean up that taper. And we can still use it. I'll be able to get that clutch off that. I'm not really worried about that. Um, new piston is uh, 87 bucks. Um, the wide scope pistons for some reason seem to be like around 150. But I like Pro X pistons. Um, let me take a look at this thing. I like Pro X. I've always used them. I like them. This is a standard bore piston, um, and I'm going to continue to use it. I haven't had any issues with them, so I am going to use the Pro X piston, and it's cheaper. Next, we're going to order this cylinder. This is a niche cylinder. Now, I wouldn't use a niche piston. Uh, you could. Um, I don't know how long it'll hold up. It looks like maybe there was a uh, Chinese piston in that bike, as it is. Um, but I wouldn't use a Chinese piston. I would, I, want to, I would use either Pro-X or Wysco. I prefer Pro-X, honestly. Uh, these cylinders don't look bad. I've heard of people using them in the past and they've had decent decent luck with them. I mean, honestly, it's just a cylinder. It should be perfectly fine. I don't see any issues at all. This isn't a race quad. 60 bucks for a brand new cylinder. Take that every day. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. So that's all I'm going to order for now. And the total is 238 bucks roughly. I also ordered the timing chain. I ordered Pro-X. Um, Pro-X is made in Japan. And I'm pretty sure I've read in more than one place that a lot of the Japanese manufacturers use Pro X pistons in their uh, ATVs and their um, dirt bikes. So it's one of the reasons why I like Pro X. So it's a timing chain that was made in Japan. It's not a cheap one. Uh, it's not as much money as uh, 
the Yamaha one, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the Yamaha one would be, but it, uh, it's a little bit cheaper and who knows? It's probably the same thing. Just Yamaha puts a mock up on it so they can make money. That's my guess. Anyways, that's on order as well. So we add another 56 bucks to the total and that puts us up around 300, $310 right now for pots. Okay guys, this is a spreadsheet that I keep on, um, actually it's a, it's got multiple pages and it's on just about everything that, that I build. It's how I keep track of everything just in case you guys, uh, want to use this method yourself. I've, I've, I've posted this in a previous video, I think, but, um, for any of you new subscribers that haven't seen this yet, I'll go over it again. So what I do is I basically, I write down the pot I need, um, the cost, um, the actual cost I pay. Sometimes when I get a, a rough estimate, I'll search for a cheaper alternative. And if I find a cheaper alternative, I'll put it over here or I'll just transfer the same cost over it, over to here. Um, and then I have my total down the bottom. So at the moment right now, I've spent $342 on pots for this um, ATV right now. And um, I just, you add that on top of the cost of, to purchase, and then when you figure in your time, you kind of come up with a selling price and you hope that you, at worst case, you break even. You don't want to be upside down. So yeah, this spreadsheet works really well for me. It might work well for you guys. Um, again, I put the uh, my estimate, guesstimate, whatever you want to call it, um, here because I have a very good idea of how much this stuff costs because I buy pots all the time. And then, like I said, I'll try to search for the cheapest alternative. Um, um, I won't buy the cheapest quality. I'll try to get good quality, but the cheapest price possible to keep, keep the cost down on this, um, rebuild. Then I put them over here. And again, I get my subtotals down the bottom. Uh, hope this helps. All right, guys, I'm going to do some cleaning off camera. Um, I might try to clean this up a little bit. I'll plug all this up, try to clean the engine up a little bit more. Um, we got a ton of pots to order, so I'm going to call this video here, and this will be part two on this, and this was the engine teardown and evaluation, and we know exactly what we got to do. Hopefully, I can save this data. Obviously, we got bare wires there um, on the pulse generator. I think I can fix those. It shouldn't be a big deal. I know it's working because we did have spark, so that should save us a little bit of money. Um, the crankshaft has been replaced, uh, as we already found out and it is a Weisco crank and we got a little bit of galling here I think that the um, flywheel spun on that shaft a little bit maybe the keyway fell out or something um, I just cleaned it up with a soapstone and um, I got all the high spots off so that should be in pretty good shape now we should be okay there um, again new crank I'm not gonna worry about it uh, there's no zero end playing it at all it's a little bit of side to side but the crank is in perf perfect perfect working order so we're good there and I want to thank you guys for staying, staying with me on this video for as long as you did. And um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, more content coming on this um, disaster. I don't know. I'm starting to think that maybe I got... <laughs> wasn't as good a buy as I thought. Um, I should do okay, though. I don't think I'll be upside down on it. But, uh, yeah. Stay tuned for more on this uh, Raptor 350. And thanks for watching.